good morning and happy Easter. Uh, hope you guys got to listen to the sermon this morning uh, by, I'm assuming, Cody, but I'm not sure who actually taught this morning. Um, but hope you got a chance to listen to it. And first thing I need you to do is grab a piece of paper and a pen uh, because you guys are going to write something down to start with. Um, you can pause this video um, if you need to go grab that. If not, just keep playing and you're ready to go. All right, so first thing you have to do is write down five people you're planning on praying for uh, this next week. So write that down. Give you just a minute. It can be your parents, friends, whatever. People at the church. Um, second is, uh, for each person, you have to write down which day you plan on praying for them. So if I plan on praying for Chris, and I'm going to do it on Monday. Um, go ahead, write that down. It can all be on Monday. It doesn't matter. They can all be Monday. That's what you want to do. All right. And thirdly, uh, five people, you need to write down five names of people you want to try and talk to. Um, because not everybody has a good support group around them. I live with four other believers, so I get to talk about things all the time and it's incredible and it's awesome. But not everybody has that. Some people have their family and they get to talk to each other and uh, encourage one another and stuff like that. But not everybody has that. So try and choose some people that might not be people you um, maybe talk to all the time or um, if you know that they you know, have a different home life, not a Christian home life, um, go ahead and go ahead and write that down. I'll give you just a minute for that. Yeah, Cause this time is a little different than usual. Um, obviously since you're watching this on a video, so, um, just taking more time to love and care for those that are around us and friends that we don't get to see all the time, like we used to. Um, whether it's Wednesdays or Thursdays or Saturday nights or Friday nights or whatever, Sunday mornings. So um, just a little time that you get to extra that you get to take care of and talk to somebody and hang out with, hang out with. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's a cool way to start. Um, so save that for later. You guys will want to use those all week. So go ahead and keep that paper. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, pray before we uh, get started. Uh, God, thank you so much for this time. Uh, thank you for uh, just another beautiful day. Uh, thank you for all the rain. Thank you for um, just time as uh, friends and family and um, brothers and sisters in Christ that we get to come together and get to uh, enjoy your word. Um, just thank you for this time. Um, I pray that we be glorified to you. In your name, amen. Okay, so let's do a little recap because uh, junior hires are in here and it's been a little bit since we've taught, so... Uh, we're doing 1 Thessalonians. Uh, the reason for the letter of 1 Thessalonians is Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy went and visited uh, for, or Thessalonica, and they got kicked out. Um, they were sharing God's word um, in the synagogues and stuff like that. So they were preaching God's word. They got kicked out, and they left. And then they sent Timothy back. So Paul sends Timothy back and says, hey, go check on them and see how they're doing. Timothy reports back to Paul saying, hey, they're doing really well. It's really encouraging. They're doing awesome. So then Paul writes this letter with Sylvanus and Timothy and writes back to them saying, you guys are super encouraging and being encouraging back to them. Like, this is awesome. Um, we've been thinking about you. We've been praying about you. Um, in verse one, we see the greeting. And then verse two and three, we see the consistently praying for the people of uh, Thessalonia. Thessalonica, people of Thessalonia. Okay. Um, and then um, just like the names we just wrote down, uh, we can be praying for them consistently. We can be praying for the church, the government. There's so many different things that we can be praying for right now. Um, these guys were spending a lot of time praying for the Thessalonians because um, they were new believers, um, and they all became very close in this very short amount of time that they were able to spend there. Um, 
but they were consistently praying for them, which is such an encouraging thing um, to know that there are people out there consistently praying for you or praying for someone else or whatever it might be. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into our new verses, um, which is 1 Thessalonians 1, 4 and 5. Um, so can somebody please read that for us? Oh, thank you, Joel. Go ahead. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you, not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. Awesome. Thank you, Joel. I appreciate that. Um, so as we can see in verse 4, uh, it starts off with, for we know. Um, this is something that we know. Um, it's not any kind of tricky anything. Um, and what do we know? We know brothers loved by God. And then we also know um, that he has chosen you. Uh, let's go with the brothers uh, loved by God first. So, uh, so brothers loved by God. Uh, this word brothers is used like 20 times between First and Second Thessalonians. Um, it's a way that Paul is not saying that he is better than anybody because he is not. He's not more superior. He's not claiming that he is better than anybody. He is saying... We're all doing this together. We're all in together. Um, so he's using it as a like a we, like brothers and ancestors, right? We're all together. We're all doing this. Um, we're all equal um, because in God's eyes, we are, right? Um, we all have one father um, as believers, um, which is God. Uh, we see that in Matthew 23, 9. Um, Cody, wake up. Cody, hey, could you read that for us, please? Thanks, man. Call no man your father on earth three of one father who is in heaven awesome thank you um all right so that's pretty clear in saying that um there is only one father right that's god so the second part is um that he has chosen you right so what does it mean to be chosen the high schoolers should have a pretty good understanding since i did ask this question to chris uh, for questions and answers on friday uh, just to see if anybody was there to pay attention um, so what does it mean to be chosen, right? To be one of God's elect, right? Um, it's really cool because we have been chosen and we've been chosen far before we were alive, before time, right? God chose us before the world. Um, and we can actually see that and that he's picked each and every single one of us, which is also very special and important. Um, that it wasn't just like, uh, let's take this batch and that batch. It was more of a, let's take Brian and let's grab Chris and let's grab this person and that person, right? Like each and every believer, right? Not just a group of like, eh, let's take all these people here and there. Um, so it's very important that he's chosen each and every one of us um, individually, which is very cool. Um, and in Ephesians 1, three through seven, um, Weston, can you read that for us, please? Thank you. Oh, what's that? Yeah, sure. I can read for you. All right. Ephesians 1, 3 through 7. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavens in Christ, for he chose us in him before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Awesome. Thanks so much, Weston. Um, so... This kind of gets interesting, right? Because God has chosen us before time, right? Before the world, right? Um, but we are supposed to choose him in a way, right? With free will and all of that. That's where things start getting very interesting and very confusing. Um, the good thing is um, that with our little human brains, uh, we won't grasp it, every, everything, right? We're not going to grasp everything. So um, we can have a idea and a concept of 
God's chosen us, um, and he sent his son for us. He died for us. He rose again, right? Happy Easter. Um, but we also need to choose to follow him and go after him and share his word with others and be lights to those around us, right? Um, it's not just the, the one thing, right? It's by grace we've been saved. It's nothing we've done, um, but we still need to do our best to love the Lord and give to the Lord and do everything in our power for the Lord, right? Because of what he has done. Um, so we need to be lights to the world. Um, and as chosen people who have been picked for before time, um, we need to be those people that are striving to um, share God's word and share God's love with others. Um, as for um, how amazing it is because of how sinful and wretched beings we really are, God knowing all of that, right? God knowing how terrible we are and how many times we mess up and how many times we fall into sin and temptation and um, knowing all of that, God still chose us, right? So he picked us before all of this stuff even happened, knowing it's gonna happen, right? It's crazy because there's so much sin and stuff in our lives um, that like why would he still pick us right? but he does he chose us right we're each chosen individually it's amazing it's super beautiful so some could say well brian how are we supposed to go out and preach right now go teach and share the gospel with people right we can't go outside the coronavirus will get us right right you might say that right and, oh it's a lot harder and all this stuff right but just because it's harder doesn't mean it's impossible we have technology we have amazing technology. We have cell phones, we have computers, we have all these things that we can communicate with other people with, right? That's how this is even working, right? We have Zoom or FaceTime or I don't know, Snapchat video, I think is a thing. There's like so many different options of ways to communicate with other people right now. Um, yeah, it's not face-to-face -face or in person, right? But um, that doesn't mean we can't do it. Right? I've actually been video chatting with one of my coworkers every day, not even for work. We've just been hanging out talking separate from work because I'm trying to share the gospel with her. We've had a few cool conversations, um, but it's, it's hard because you don't get to be in person. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it. I should be, oh, well, it's just hard, so I'll just wait until this is all over, right? We need to be doing our best to talking to people, right? sharing God's word, sharing God's love um, with those around us and those that could be around us but aren't because, well, we can't leave our houses and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's pretty awesome, though, that we do have technology, right? Because right now is a very cool time to live because we can still communicate with each other even though we're not near each other. So we see here in the next um, verse, right? The verse 5 um, is because our gospel, right? So do you think Paul is saying this is his, Sylvanus and Timothy's gospel? Or is it God's gospel that they also have? It's the gospel that they also have, right? It's our gospel. It's the gospel that we are holding on to and loving and caring. Not the gospel that they've created, right? That's not what this is saying here. Um, they're saying that the gospel is their gospel, right? It's in them. So they're saying it is our gospel. Um, uh, in Romans um, 1, 1, uh, it talks about, it says we are set apart for the gospel of God. Um, so it's God's gospel. It's not their gospel. Um, and then... The next part is came to you not only in word. Um, in Romans 10, 13 through 17, um, it actually talks about this in a cool way. So, uh, Ambry, can you please read that for us? For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? 
Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ambry. So the first verse, verse 13, uh, talks a little bit about um, how God has chosen us, right? And then we have also the responsibility, right? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, that's our side of it, right? We, we have to do something. Um, and then verse 14 talks about um, how like people haven't heard um, this before, right? Like how are people supposed to leave if they haven't heard? Um, or uh, how are they to hear without somebody preaching, right? Us going out, teaching God's word, spreading God's word, talking to people. Um, and then uh, verse 17, uh, so faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from the word of Christ, right? We have God's word here that we get to read and we get to study and learn. Um, but if we're not spending time in it, then we're not learning, we're not growing, we're not seeking God, that's, that's not good, right? We're not hearing anything. We're closing our ears and saying, you know what, I'm good. So words come verbally, but they also come written on paper and vice versa, right? So uh, those are both very important points um, in here that we're still choosing to um, call on the name of the Lord. And then also um, that there is an action, there's a hearing that needs to be heard, right? And that's us going out and preaching and talking to people. But the word doesn't only come to them, uh, comes to them in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, right? So it's not just, here's words on a piece of paper, right? They're coming, here are words on a piece of paper that come in power through the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit uh, and in full conviction. Like, that's a lot more than just a little piece of paper, right? So God's word is that way. Um, and that is what's being given to these people, right? God's word is being given. The gospel is being given to these people. Um, it's beautiful, right? It's, it is a very powerful thing. Um, it's not something that just comes and goes, oh, like, hey, I'm here. All right, well, see you later. Uh, it's a very strong, like, presence with the gospel, right? It's a very powerful thing. Um, let's see. In John 16, 7 through 8, uh, talks about the helper, um, which is the Holy Spirit. Um, and that verse, let's see. Can we have somebody read that for us too, please? Somebody, anybody? Just raise your hand, that'll be great. No? All right, fine. I'll do it. Give me just a sec. All right, so we have John 16, 7 through 8. John 16, 7 through 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Uh, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him. And when he comes, yeah, and through 8, uh, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Um, right, so if the helper comes, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So the helper is very helpful, right? It's not just, oh, I now have somebody that can help fold my laundry, right? Like, it is a very powerful and very strong, um, helper, right? Which is the Holy Spirit. Um, so when... We go back to 1 Thessalonians, and it says that our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and the Holy Spirit, right? It's not just throwing a Holy Spirit in there saying, ah, just, you know, our little helper. Um, it is coming with more power, right? So in power and even more power, which is the Holy Spirit, um, and with full conviction, right? Which is very powerful. Um, so this whole thing is saying our gospel right is powerful right and it's getting spread through word but not only through word but 
through a very powerful word with the Holy Spirit, like alongside it being pushed around to everybody that we get to talk to as believers and that God touches and has chosen before time. So, um, and then the last part is, you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. Um, we kind of all know Chris, right? We all know Chris, tall guy. Um, he, uh, he's somebody that's been around for a very long time, right? And he's been at Valley for a very long time. We all can pretty much say like, oh, I know who Chris is, or I know Chris. Um, these guys were only in uh, Thessalonica for only a couple weeks. Um, but they spent time with them. They got to know each other. They um, talked a lot, right? They're not sitting, hanging out on their cell phones the whole time, just watching TikToks or whatever. But they were actually talking and communicating and growing closer to each other and learning and growing with each other. Um, so you know what kind of men we proved to be because we were among you for your sake, right? So they're saying that this stuff is important, right? And you know that we really mean it because you know who we are. So if Chris came up to you and said, hey, um, it's really important that you bring your Bible next week, right? It'd be important, right? But if Chris comes up to you and says like, hey, you know, like, uh, if you could bring your Bible next week, that's cool. But if not, like, don't worry about it, right? There's, there's difference there. Like, there's a Chris is being kind and sweet or Chris is being like, hey, we need to bring your Bible. Okay, so you can tell that there is a difference between the two. Um, and they're saying that, like, we're giving you and bringing all of this stuff to you, which is the gospel, um, and we're doing it not in a way where it's just kind of like a, oh, here's the gospel, hope you guys, like, enjoy it. Uh, they're not doing it that way. They know what kind of men these guys are, and they are here to preach God's word and preach it as often as possible. So it's very cool to see that they know the kind of people they are because it changes the gravity of what is being said. So um, those are the verses that we're going through today. Um, but all right, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoy um, time with your family um, and enjoying Easter. Uh, hopefully you guys have something fun planned inside, obviously. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys, uh, have a great day. Um, let's pray. Uh, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this time. Uh, I just pray and thank you for your word that you've given to us, Lord, and that we have heard. Um, I pray that we would, um, just be seeking to spread your word, Lord, with those around us and those, um, in our lives, Lord. Um, I just pray that we would, um, just be in touch with those around us, Lord, that we would be communicating and talking to them, Lord, and sharing your word about, you dying on the cross, Lord, and coming back and um, taking our sins, God. Um, I thank you for uh, just today. Uh, in your name, amen. Have a good one, guys.